Is this the most exciting rock fishing location in Metro Adelaide? We're down at Merino Rocks, an exciting fishing destination for land base, kayakers and boaties alike. G'day guys, um, I'm going to have a have a chat to the weatherman because um, I'm sick of driving one to two hours to destinations where it's saying the wind is supposed to be going that way and it's going that way. But anyway, we've got a couple of rods here today. We're going to uh, try our best to float a uh, Inku squid jig out there. The tide's coming in, so we'll move back gradually. And then on the other rod, my T-curve um, with 12 pound line is the, um, we'll try some snook lures. Um, got some various uh, slugs and uh, deep divers here as well. Just given the overcast conditions, just gonna put out the, um, the gold runner. It's probably uh, a good choice for today. There is some Squidgy's S Factor in this. Doesn't taste too bad actually. <laughs> it's almost got that prawn cracker sort of taste. Without the crackle and pop. Anyway, I have to have a drink to get that over with. Need to adjust the float stopper. And uh, first cast, let's see how we go. Hopefully that's all right out there. Don't want to get too much of this uh, slack line under the, uh, under the rocks. That's the challenge on this spot. I am going to have a drink because that it's almost prawn cracker slash chicken chips. Which sounds nice. Certainly the salt in it. Let's keep an eye on that float. As I said, I was really hoping the wind was going to be going that way, not that way. That's going to influence my decision on the, on the, uh, on the lure for the snook. Just going to go the um, the 30 gram Halco twisty slug and see if we can get uh, some interest. I'm getting a few looks from uh, other fishermen around because I seem to be talking to myself. The joys of uh, YouTubing, and I'm going to have to be careful because I don't want to uh, get too much snagged on these rocks bringing this in either. But anyway, let's give it a crack. Keeping an eye on that flight out there as well at the same time. One of the other guys is just leaving, so I might actually take his spot depending on how this all goes here. Oh. Well, that's really interesting. I've lost my bloody squid jig. Hope we don't do lose too many of them because I um, only bought three with me. Oh, that is annoying. I've never had that before. Put the glow tiger on. It's on the clip rather than on a swivel. Seriously, did a squid just untwist the jag from the clip? Just gonna watch it for a little bit. With the uh, squid jigs under the float, it's also all about watching if it goes against, you know, the wind or the current or whatever, because that can often be a sign as much as it is going straight down. All right, let's get this twisty out there a bit more. See if we can't uh, hook onto a snook or, or maybe a salmon even would we'll take this. It's got a great cast on it, this T-curve. Uh, the size rod it is. I guess it's that three to six kilo, so it's quite whippy for a surf rod. Last time I was here, I, I honestly didn't catch anything until the sun was literally just hitting the water. Gonna get a good workout tonight anyway with plenty of casts, so that's the main thing. 
obviously just keeping an eye on the tide coming in. It does come in relatively quick down here, but there's still plenty of high rocks behind us, which is great. I need a couple of good sized snook and we'd be happy. Match that with three or four squid and uh, it'll be worth the, uh, you know, two and a bit hour round trip to get here from home. Oh, it's so deceptive sometimes that, how that float looks like it goes under. In fact, it looks like it's going right to left, which does look a bit strange. So I am just gonna give it a bit of a pull and see if there's uh, something interested. Doesn't feel like much weight. And maybe around a rock here, which is a bit frustrating. We're off, so that's good. And we'll just recast it again. At least we didn't lose the jig this time. <laughs> mm. There we go. And again, I'll, I'll just wind in some of that slack so we're not too loose and get around the rocks. And, and you should watch your jig, like your float straight away after you cast it because the squid will often grab the jig on the float down. So if you're not watching it, I've had it before where I've not watched it and then forgot about the float and then go on, oh, must have grabbed it on the way down. Hello. Hi. Nah, this is rock. Oh, just lost it. How are you? <laughs> nah, not yet. And I've actually lost my whole leader there. So that's come off on the rocks. Gonna have to tie a new leader. I bought extra leader with me. Just gonna get it out. Thank you. No worries, gotcha. Thank you. That must have actually broken the braid on the rocks. All right, guys. Well, it's turning out to be another one of these sessions that doesn't want me to succeed, that uh, I've just lost my float around a rock, really over this whole rock line situation. That's uh, two snags, two lost rigs. One that needs a whole new leader. The other one, uh, the first of all needs a float stopper put on, which we can do. It's sort of good that we're recording this, otherwise I might have already lost my rag. Just uh, try and keep positive, huh? And I am, I'm gonna move spots. I'm gonna move down that way and try and get out of all these rocks out here. Right here guys, we've moved around a bit and uh, we're gonna put another, my last squid jag on, huh? Gonna have to get some more squid jags from Inku. Be ridiculous. I knew I should have bought just my whole tray with me. But I thought, ah, three squid jags. When have you ever lost more than one squid jag a session? Well, there's always a first for everything, isn't there? Probably is the, Probably the right sort of time for the red devil anyway. And again, I just need to make sure it doesn't go all over the rocks. If you've got any suggestions on how to stop that, floating line, is that the, so what we need? Even with that, I think it would have get caught. It is that perfect time when the sun's just coming down, where they're gonna come on the, uh, on the chew, on the suck. What do you call it? <laughs> on the chew, I guess. I do really want to tie a leader onto that rod and flick out for some snook, but I also don't want to let this one down and get the line caught around the rocks because I've only got the one squid jig left. Don't want to miss the opportunity to get two or three squid. They've got to be out here. Like, I'm feeling it's a, it has to be like a guarantee catch out here for at least two. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Now, it's perfect that time of night and I have uh, shortened that leader, so if they do come out of the weeds and want it, they should really pull it down rather than just pulling it to the side. That almost looks like what could be happening now, but it's hard to tell. Normally they're just so aggressive and you just know it. I'm not saying there's no skill in it, but <laughs> there's definitely skill, but there's um, often not as much skill as I seem to make out to be. Because as I said, normally they just get on and off they go. Yeah, and we have the S factor on there, so if they grab on, they'll get that. What did I say earlier? Prawn cracker, uh, chicken, chicken chips flavour. Doesn't hurt just to bring it in a little bit and let it drop again, because as we know, the squid like to grab the the jigs on the drop generally. 
Let us know if you've land-based fished down here before. I think this is about my fourth time, and I've caught squid every time so far, so let's keep that tradition alive, huh? <laughs> well, and we're not losing. I haven't seen anyone catch anything yet, so we've got to be due real soon. went right under then like no waves straight under and then bob right back up i don't know what does that this is some weird current something through there i i have no idea just going to put on this one I've had it for a long long time it's one of those lures i bought when i was like a teenager and thought it looked pretty cool give it a crack just going to undo the drag because i had the drag done up when i was doing the knot the fg knot Probably not that loose. <laughs> oh, don't tell me I've got it hooked on a rock already. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. Ugh. All right, I think I need to go to just fishing one rod, guys, because this is becoming a real pain in the backside. All these so-called good ideas, Matt, are just landing me in trouble. All right, you're off. I'm gonna put that out there. And then get this out of the way and try again. That sunset is absolutely spectacular. Have a look at that. Oh, look at it too long. I've got spots in my eyes. Swims really well in the water. Looks like a garfish or which would be perfect for out here for a sneak to come and grab. The wind has dropped right off, which is just absolutely perfect. You can see that probably swimming in the water. It's very good. All right, this is the last cast on this before I check this uh, squid jig. Nothing following it in. We'll get this jig in. Cast it back out. I can't believe we haven't caught anything. We are so due a fish. Sorry, a squid, fish even. Can't catch a fish on this one out there thought about putting a squid jig on this rod then I realized oh no I've already lost two so that's not going to happen haven't seen anyone catch a squid one two three been a few other people come and go during this session so again I don't feel too bad if I'm not the only if I'm the only one not catching but it just feels like such perfect conditions the wind as I said has dropped right off the light is probably really bad for you guys now I would assume so let's try and get a squid on before it's too dark where are they all where are they all? <laughs> Cleaned out on the weekend. So this is, I guess, one of those episodes where I show the true side of fishing, where you drive, you know, two hours around trip or more. I think you've got the perfect weather. I think you've got the incoming tide on dusk. And, uh, oh, this is what you end up with. Um, if you like that sort of um, real authentic fishing, <laughs> then uh, give us a subscribe to keep my videos coming into your feed and give the video a like. We gotta earn it down here in South Australia. And we're definitely earning our pennies tonight. Absolutely. G'day guys, well, we're down at Merino Rocks today. It's about 40 degrees, so I'm putting in the hard yards for you guys. We're fishing two methods today. We're gonna to be floating a squid jig, hoping that we can uh, pick up some calamari. It's absolutely pretty much glassed out here. Um, probably the calmest it's been that I've ever fished here. The second target species today, we'll be using the Halco Twisty and perhaps some other slugs and soft plastics for some snook. So can we catch some squid and snook at Merino Rocks? First things first, just need to set the, um, the depth on this uh, squid. Well, I haven't set it too deep, that's probably about right, and then I'll get the squidges S factor and we'll get in the water. I did um, have a very quick chat to a young lad on the way out here who was going back, and he said that he caught a couple of squid, which is always positive. 
But more importantly, he said they saw some snook around, but didn't have any lures. So I'm hoping if we can get this one out there, we'll be able to start with some squid. I lost a bit of gear when I was here on Monday. I lost the Halco Twisty. I lost a hard body diver. I lost a couple of squid jigs. And I lost a float. So I'm hoping we can make up for it today by catching some squid and some snook. I'm just gonna fan my cast out so it's sort of there, there. Oh, that didn't go very far. Interesting that the kayaks are more down sea cliff than Merino Rocks way. Certainly gonna have to try and keep hydrated today. We're about an hour from high tide. I think I was exactly at this spot on Monday and it didn't really impact uh, this rock. So I should be right on this rock. It may get a little bit wetter where the, where the gear is down there. It's a bit of work casting and retrieving in 40. Oh, that felt like a hit. And there's no weed on that. That could have been a hit. Might try and speed it up a bit, see if that gets more interest. The old sneaker, pretty fast fish. There's that cloud out there, which is quite interesting. Like it's raining out near possibly like semaphore grains, maybe even out of harbour way. All right, guys, I saw two very distinct pulls on that rig, on that uh, float. And I just had to wind in my Halco Twisty first. <laughs> and I might have missed the opportunity. Maybe not. Can't believe how hot it is out here, guys. Sweating buckets. Well, that was interesting. A bubble just popped up right next to my jig. I wonder what that's from. I've uh, never really noticed a bubble do that before. Hmm. I'll just bring it in and uh, I guess recast it out there and it's got a bit of weed on it. That's probably maybe, I don't think it was weed that pulled it down. It was sort of, it was too, oh, it was too, um, too sharp of a, of a pull down in my view. Let's see. The water is uh, becoming clearer and clearer. It's like uh, something you'd expect to, almost in a tropical island, perhaps not as blue, but certainly very, very clear. Haven't had much luck or any real interest on the twisty, so I'm probably gonna um, try a, a, a placky. I did sort all my Daiwa sling bag out this morning, but I can't remember what plackies I left in there, so it'll be a surprise for both of us. Even the rod's warm. This is my Daiwa sling bag. I've got some classic white, which I think are good for the snook. I've also got some uh, streaks. We'll try with the paddle tail first. No, there is jig heads here, that's good. I've got a one ounce, eighth, one sixth. I'm gonna do a one, uh, one quarter, three o. Oh. Should be pretty perfect. That looks uh, pretty perfect. We'll take the uh, Halco Twisty off the uh, T curve and put this one on with some S Factor. Just gonna, again, wind up some of this slack. All right, guys, we've got our first squid. You can see that float just heading left. Oh, seriously, there's got to be one on there. They just started heading left. This is a tiny one. All right, we'll get it back out there. I'm pretty, I'm absolutely positive that was a squid. I saw it go under twice and then it just started heading left. Not keen to put the soft plastic out because I have to, I feel like I've missed the, missed the squid by having to wind it in. An eagle ray out here too. Let's see if we can turn on just to catch a him. Hey, there's a little eagle ray out there, just on the side of that rock. Just saw the float go under again. Not for a long time, just a second. Almost in exactly the same spot as where it went before. All right, guys, I've seen that jig go under a couple of times again. While the cameras were off, we changed over to the uh, old style glow tiger. Nothing, come on. It was like literally as I just decided to put the rod up, pick up the T curve, give that a a flick that uh, uh, float started to go under. Yet by the time I turned the cameras on, grabbed the rod, nothing. 
I know you guys want to see the hookup, but maybe next time I just need to grab the rod. <laughs> More important, we catch something than get the hookup. We'll put it back out where it was. So I'm just going to hold off on the on the snook fishing because I really do want to land sort of three or four squid for a feed tomorrow. And as I said, this is the second time in a week I've been here and I really don't want to go home empty handed. I think the weather has dropped a few degrees, which is great. Well, all right, guys, this is the summer rain. This is the bit where we get wet. It's taken a while, guys. In fact, I was sitting down. And that other camera's not on, but we've got a squid, finally. I don't think it's very big. <laughs> but you know what? I'll take anything at the moment. Doesn't seem to want to squirt. If we had moved this camera, there he goes. Never moved that camera because of that rain, but we'll put him back over here. Um, we might actually go the other way, given the sun. Oh. There's a few out there, which is good. Not a bad, not a bad size. Whack him in there. We'll get back out there, huh? Gold runner on dusk. Well, nearly dusk. We squirted a few times, so that bucket's a bit... I am actually really happy to get one, because as I said, I've been here twice this week and hadn't got one. Be nice to get, as I said earlier, three or four. Don't think I've really seen any other squid getting caught, so the inku's come through. And the weather has dropped, I'd say, a good uh, five to 10 degrees, so it's probably early 30s, which is nice. Plane going over. I don't know if that's one of the uh, shark spotting planes. Hope it's not uh, that long between squid, because we've probably been here two hours already. I have a look at my phone. Yeah, it's seven o'clock. We got here just on five, so which means we're past the high tide. So it's not going to get any wetter. That's the main thing. High tide was about an hour, about now, well, about half an hour ago, about an hour or so before the sun should be going down. So we are in that peak squidding time. I've been casting these soft plackies and uh, nothing else has happened on the squid jig without much return at all. Um, only the one squid today. Watch this video next, guys.